our $1 million price prediction, the latest from Max Kaiser. Also, I have a bonus prediction coming from a crypto analytics platform by the name of Glassnode. I like to follow their stuff. They're pretty good. And I'm going to be sharing the latest from Max. And real quick, show Max some love in the comments. Uh, happy birthday, I wrote to the high priest of Bitcoin, the one and only. Uh, he retweeted it. Greatly appreciate this man. Help transform my life, and I got a lot of respect for the high priest. But before I get into the latest predictions from Max with Bitcoin hitting a million dollars and all that stuff, first I want to read you this analysis from Glassnode. And shout out to this: uh, Is that a beaver? A hamster? Is that the? Uh, hmm. What kind of animal is that? Or is that the um, honey badger? I'm curious. Let me know. Kind of cute with that Bitcoin. Anyways, <laughs> Glassnode thinks Bitcoin could be primed for a parabolic rise if Bitcoin repeats a particular pattern. Uh, Jan Hapel and Jan Alman, the Glassnode founders, share the, uh, basically, that draws attention to the quote, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. You hear that often on the show as well, which is often attributed to Mark Twain. Oh, wow. I didn't know Mark Twain was the originator. Anyways, according to them, Bitcoin looks poised to replicate a pattern witnessed during the last two bull markets as Bitcoin Creates the bull flag of the weekly chart, quoting them here. Bitcoin has moved to the 6.618 Fibonacci extension after the bull flag correction. We're currently in a small correction, like in late 2017 and late 2020. Will history rhyme in 2024? And Bitcoin moved to the 6.1618 Fibonacci in this bull market. That would give us a target of roughly 120,000 per coin. Look at that parabolic ascent. It's like Michael Jordan in his prime jumping from that, uh, what is it, the, th uh, the free throw line, dunking it. Let's go. Anyways, that's pretty lit. Now, traders use Fibonacci extensions and technical analysis, aka astrology for men, that's estimate profit targets and price pullbacks, and they're based on Fibonacci ratios. With Bitcoin trading now uh, around 39,000, Bitcoin's market cap also down. Of course, everything is down right now. The Glassnode co founders appear bullish on equities. They also share trend following is a strong investment strategy. Ask yourself, why am I bearish equities and current technical setup? The NASDAQ just past the former all-time highs. It is above the three-month simple moving average and the 12-month simple moving average. The three-month is above the 12-month. The relative strength index, the RSI, is at 66. The MACD, which is the moving average convergence divergence, is bullish and rising. Someone needs to throw that in a rhyme, some bars. Moving with the average convergence divergence. Anyways, from a trend-following perspective, why would I expect a crash here? And I think they're right. I don't, I'm not anticipating a larger crash. The RSI measures the price momentum of an asset on a scale of zero to 100, a level of 30, and below indicates oversold conditions while the reading is 70, and above suggests overbought conditions. Meanwhile, the MACD is traditionally used to spot trend reversals and confirm the trends. Now let's get into the latest from Kaiser. Stacy Herbert wrote, happy birthday, my love. And then again, I just shared happy birthday to the high priest of Bitcoin, the one and only Max Kaiser. And Max actually responded showing Stacy some love. I've made only one truly great decision in my life. February 13th, two days after my birthday. That's me. Uh, 2003, less than 10 seconds after seeing her smile, I decided to absolutely just marry Stacey Herbert. Now, definitely my favorite power couple. True love is very rare in this world. So much respect to Max and Stacey, my favorite Bitcoin couple. Now, he also wrote one year ago today, January 23rd on my birthday, I discussed with Bukele these five topics, all of which he resoundingly rejected. <laughs> Number one, shorten the El Salvador national anthem from four minutes to two minutes. <laughs> two, ban restaurants from wrapping utensils and paper napkins so tightly you destroy the napkin when you unwrap the knife and fork. How many can relate to that one? Number three, mandate all Pupusas must be fried in beef tallow. I don't know nothing about that life as a vegetarian, but anyways. Number four, install a 300 feet welcome to El Salvador built board with a picture of Max and Stacy at the airport. I'm all for that one. That'd be pretty lit. And number five, outlaw driving more than 50 miles per hour under the speed limit and mandate all Salvadorans must demonstrate they know how to drive through roundabouts. So obviously Max has some pet peeves, but just having some fun here. This was actually his pitcher celebration with Bukele last year. They had a cake. Happy birthday, Max. I'm curious if he's kicking it with Bukele today to celebrate his special day. And uh, show Max some love, please, in the comments. If you follow me on X, 
retweet my post showing him some birthday love. Let's spread the word because he has done so much for Bitcoin, being the first one to actually introduce Bitcoin to a global audience via the Kaiser Report with Stacey Herbert back in 2011 when Bitcoin was somewhere between a dollar and $10, which is unheard of. Now, Kaiser also wrote, capitulation is here. The fiat money world has thrown in the towel. Now, the few with resources are building Bitcoin positions as fast as possible under $1 million. BTC. That's right. And this headline, why Bitcoin is up by almost 150% this year, introducing the cockroach theory of crypto because you can't kill it. And that that don't kill us only makes us stronger. You know what I mean? Quoting Max here, Bitcoin is designed to be attacked. When the EU says we need to attack the price of Bitcoin, that's music to Bitcoiner ears because all attacks mean a greater hash rate, greater security, and higher prices. It's designed to be attacked. The more you attack it, the higher the price goes. So we welcome the EU attacks and the IMF, Christine Lagarde, and central banks and Federal Reserve Bank. Please attack me so that my price can go to 100000 200000 $1 million per coin. Thank you. Send it. So yes, please attack Bitcoin and make it stronger. I'm with you on that. He also shared, this is a throwback. I shared it on October 30th, quoting him, all fiat money and gold eventually goes to effectively zero against Bitcoin because it's demonetizing gold. The same way gold demonetized silver, Bitcoin will be demonetizing gold. So sure, gold will maybe go to two, three, four thousand an ounce, but we're talking about Bitcoin eventually going to five million to ten million dollars per coin. So your purchasing power in gold terms is almost basically basically nothing compared to what's happening in Bitcoin. It's all going to zero against the apex predator. You already know family. Now, in a interview with Swan, Max revealed just 1% of these total addressable market will cause the price of Bitcoin to skyrocket. So let's discuss this. With Bitcoin, it's kind of the end of price discovery because everything will be priced in Bitcoin eventually. Everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. And so for someone like myself who has been following this for 40 years, the finance markets, technology, Bitcoin is the holy grail. It is the end all. I would say my compatriot in all of this Michael Saylor. When you hear Michael Saylor talk, he talks about the aesthetics of Bitcoin, the beauty of Bitcoin, and he speaks about it in a way I think carries the torch uh, from the Max and Stacey Herbert of 2011. And he started buying it, I guess, somewhere between 10 and 12,000 or so in the 2020 era. We were there from 2011 to 2020. I think he's kind of carried the torch from 2020 in a lot of ways, introducing Bitcoin to massive pools of capital. I am surprised that more companies haven't followed his lead, given the upbreak in inflation we have had exactly as he predicted it. The melting ice cube, as he called it at that time, is exactly what happened. Well, I guess we can say now, we're now in the era where BlackRock and these other major institutions are now looking at Bitcoin. So his work on the institutional level, I guess, is bearing fruit now three years later. Facts. Now, I see in the Middle East, they're starting to recognize Bitcoin. Preach. I've been covering that all week, family. So that's a huge pool of capital. I think all that oil money will find its way into Bitcoin and be a huge catalyst for higher prices. Tell them it's a natural way for the oil industry to diversify their portfolio because Bitcoin is essentially energy and the energy eventually gets priced in Bitcoin. And there is a marriage between these two in a big way. Precisely what I just covered in yesterday's episode. They're tokenizing oil and partnering. You had the largest banks of the world partnering with the biggest oil companies to get into digital assets. So just as he predicted several months ago, I think that's kind of the answer, he says. I have also always fascinated by the price discovery in markets and the architecture of how the markets work under the hood. Bitcoin is such a pristine, perfect money. And I think it's something that humans have been searching for since forever, Laura. And now we're seeing it change society on really a fundamental level with the introduction of BTC. A lot of people are freaking out because of it. It destroys the status quo. And a lot of people have been waiting for it to come along, had the faith that humanity can be saved. They see Bitcoin in those terms. So you have this split going on, which is very exciting. So it just continues on and on. And how can it not, be, how can not someone be interested in it? I think the people who were into it earlier and walked away just never got it from the beginning. Once it's categorized as an asset class, we have nothing to do except accept our position and position ourselves in the asset class. Either we're gonna be a small position or a big position, but we cannot ignore it. We cannot not have a position. So even 1% of that multi hundred trillion dollar funds available moves the needle on Bitcoin, moving it up considerably. So if we get into the five to 10% range, then you start to really see it raise ahead to the seven figure type predictions that people have been making, including myself, because Bitcoin is an asset class. 
On the flip side, we have what we saw in the gold market, which is the ability to control price discovery. Manipulating the prices is real through derivative markets. So the price of gold has been lagging inflation for 20 years because the governments around the world don't like gold making their fiat money look bad. Tell them. So they make it easy for huge funds to manipulate the price of gold and to scalp and to continuously skim profits off of gold, which is what they do almost every day. You can watch it and see it pretty clearly. And they are very good at keeping the price of gold and silver down. There's something like for every ounce of silver, there's probably 50 ounces worth of derivatives floating in various exchanges around the world that are used to keep the price of silver down because governments don't want gold to race ahead to draw capital out of their fiat money scam and into gold. That's right. You think they're going to let gold hit $100,000 an ounce? Then everyone would trade their dollars for gold and the dollar would effectively collapse and go to zero. They gotta protect their dollar, make sure they have a strong US dollar, and you do that by suppressing the precious metal markets. Hence, exactly what they do, he called it. With Bitcoin, we have the ability to pull our private keys, which is not really available with gold. Take that, Peter Schiff. Technically, people can take delivery of gold on these exchanges, but there's never been an organized attempt to do so. We tried to do it a few years ago, a crash JP Morgan buy gold and silver because after the 2008 financial crisis, when JP Morgan ended up buying Bear Stearns effectively for nada, they inherited this huge multi-million short position that Bear Stearns was managing at the behest of presumably the government. The government likes to stay involved. They sure do. And so I did some calculations and it became clear that if this short position was not covered and the price of silver got to $60, $70 an ounce, it would bankrupt JP Morgan. So we started this crash JP Morgan buy silver campaign and we got the price of silver from $15 up to 50. So we got it up to the old Hunt Brothers $50 level. Then the Fed, of course, came in and they changed the laws overnight to make it possible for these banks, JP Morgan, to have and carry much greater short positions in silver. So they printed up a lot of paper silver derivatives and they stopped the run on their bank and the price went back down to 15 bucks or so. So we have seen that it is possible uh, to force capitulation in the silver market. But at the end of the day, because the ability to pull private keys is not like it is with Bitcoin, I don't think it'll ever succeed. Whereas with Bitcoin, you can pull your private keys. So there you have it, my crypto fam. 